Hey there, Matthew Armstrong here, and this is day six of our 100 day challenge to create financial freedom in our lives. And I say our lives because it's, it's not just me now, it's, it's you. Uh, if you're watching these videos, you've got to video number six, then you obviously want to create financial freedom in your life as well. So congratulations, it's a, it's a great desire to have. It's a great desire to have because when you create financial freedom in your life, you can help so many other people in the world rather than having the thing in your head of making end meet of you know having to exchange time for money where you're spending so much time in a maybe in a job or something you don't enjoy doing so much that it's taking up your time that you could be using uh, for your passions and for you know adding more value to the world so that is my my intent to create financial freedom for myself and for you and as long as you watch these 100 videos in a row take the actions um, you, you, you're you're going to do it. That's my belief. That's my absolute belief. You, you take the actions. It's it's a it's a it's a system. It's a mindset, and the mindset is more important than anything because you can give someone a set of instructions, but if they don't have the mindset, they'll sabotage it. They'll do something to trip themselves up. They'll find all these reasons why not, why they can't do it, and so that's what this 100 days is about: is getting rid of all that junk in the head, taking it away, and getting some new distinctions and some new ideas and uh, growing uh, a wealth mindset, a financial abundance, a freedom mindset. So that's what we're doing right now. So if you haven't already watched video one, make sure you go right now, click on the link and watch video one. That is crucially important to watch these videos sequentially to get the, uh, the full benefit uh, from them. Okay, as I said, I've got a, a story, a personal story actually, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be, sharing more of my personal stuff in these videos because why not? Let's just put it all out on the table. I think I've got a lot of stuff that's kind of happened to me in my life, experiences that I've had, and you know, if, if I can't use those, those experiences to maybe inspire um, and help transform other people's lives, then you know, what's the point of just having those experiences just for myself? I, I think it's useful to also because we learn by stories, you know, we learn best by stories, you know, that's why, you know, the Bible is just full of stories, right? Because that's how we learn, that's why, you know, Jesus talked in stories, all great leaders in the world, they, they talk in stories, and uh, because we remember stories, we don't just remember information, it's the stories and it's the distinctions that we get, the metaphors that are within the stories that affect our unconscious mind and uh, will make your unconscious mind uh, be able to affect your conscious mind and affect your results in your life because our whole life, 98% of our lives are controlled by our unconscious mind. So when your conscious mind is thinking something, it's actually going to be driven by your unconscious mind. So you might consciously say, oh yeah, I want to do this, but whatever you believe back there in the unconscious, that's what's actually going to drive you forward. I'm going to get more into the mind and how it works and uh, by understanding that, you can start to start to shift things a lot better in future videos. Uh, for now, I want, first I want to share a story. Uh, what we need to do is we need to get over our fears. We need to get over our fears, so that's what I want to do in this first set of videos, is get, get rid of the blocks. Get rid of the blocks that, that are stopping us. And uh, you know, many years ago, I thought about this story because I've been reading, been reading this book, uh, The 50th Law, The 50th Law, by 50 Cent of all people. Well, what a cool dude he is, 50 Cent, yeah. And it's, it's, it's a comic book, you know, it's written like, like comic style, but it is really, really good. Um, so don't be put off by it, it's, it's a comic style book. There are so many learnings to get from reading this book, it's absolutely incredible. And uh, just by reading that book, you know, you can transform your life. And so when I read that, I kind of got something from it, because 50 Cent, cool dude, totally fearless guy, you know, billionaire now, and where did he come from? He was a drug dealer on the streets when he was 12 years old. Um, he was a hustler. He, he came from the, from, from the hood, you know. He, he didn't have any, um, I don't know, like major resources, anything kind of helping. He had sort of everything against him. And uh, he, he went to jail. He went to, uh, he got shot. He nearly died. He got shot nine times. And he came through all that and went on to create a... A, a dynasty. He, came on to, he, he went on to be you know, world famous, world popular, um, a billionaire. That's, that's pretty unbelievable, getting all, all these platinum records, all these awards. So amazing guy, so there's a lot to learn from that guy. So that's why I wanted to get his, get his book and read you know, what goes on, what went on in 50 Cent's head 
to make him get over those obstacles, to make him have the massive achievement that he had in his life. What goes on in his head? And there's a little hint for you is, you know, you want to create something amazing in your life, look at other people that have created amazing things in their lives and model them. Because a lot of amazing people out there, they've written books. So you can just get their books, you can read their books, and you're getting inside their mind and learning how they tick, why they do the things they do, um, what are their strategies, what are their mindset that they have, um, you know, what exactly have they done to do it. So that's a great book, I recommend that one, The 50th Law. And I, he doesn't actually mention what The 50th Law is, isn't it? But I think I kind of get it. Um, that at the end he says, when the fear of death is gone, nothing can bother you and nobody can stop you. That's powerful. And he, he got that you know, real distinction after he got shot nine times and he came back from it. And um, you know, his fear of death was absolutely gone. Uh, and I thought about it, I thought, yeah, actually, I actually don't have a fear of death. You know, if we can get fear, rid of our fear of death, and all other fears start to just fall away. You know? And uh, my story was, I was, uh, some of you may know, I was in the Royal Marines many years ago, and uh, we got sent, a small elite team, we got sent over, this one, the Zaire War was going on in 1997, and we got sent to uh, Brazzaville, and we're, our job was to evacuate British nationals from Kinshasa, mainly on, in the embassy when the rebels were taking over the city. So we had many different jobs to do there. But one of the things we were doing, we were actually smug the borders were closed, so we were actually smuggling uh, weapons, ammunition, uh, cryptographic secret materials from the embassy, and across the, the border. The border was a, was a huge river, Brazzaville River, but a kilometer across. And uh, we were doing that all illegally. We were a very small team, small unit. And anyway, we got, we got saw by the, by the river police. They thought we were mercenaries because we were kind of undercover just wearing stuff like, like this. And, uh, you know, just in normal sort of vehicles, uh, not military vehicles or anything. And so they just, they just swarmed on us, the, the military, the, the river police, they, they surrounded me and this other guy with cars, and the boats went off, um, sped away, they, they got away. And uh, so we were surrounded, our two cars, uh, with guys with AKs, you know, serious, serious dudes, cocking their AKs, pointing them at us. And I sat there, I just felt very, very calm. For some reason, I, 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 I didn't know if I was going to die or not. I didn't think I was, but I wasn't afraid of it anyway. And... Uh, so they, they got around the other guy's car and they smashed into it. They, they, they put down his tires, they, they smashed the car, they all got around his car. I, I had a chance to drive away, but I didn't. I didn't drive away because, because he was in that car and he had a swarm of people around him and he got caught first and he stopped. And I had a chance to get out of there and I didn't, I didn't move because I said to myself, I'm not leaving him behind. And there's no way I'm going to live the rest of my life knowing that I left someone behind. For me, I was, I was prepared to die first and live my life thinking that I'd left somebody. So I stayed there and he got pulled out of that car by a, by a swarm of people. Uh, some of them were holding uh, weapons and uh, we got swarmed by about a hundred people within a few minutes. And it didn't look good. It really didn't look good. So I sat there and I was in a big Toyota um, like SUV type vehicle and I said, okay, if, if they start tearing them apart, I'm just going to put my foot down, I'm going to drive through the whole lot of them. I'm going to take as many people out as possible. Um, you know, that's just what I was going to do. So that was, that's what I was going to do. But funnily enough, as soon as they got him out, they weren't interested in him, they were interested in the stuff that was in the car. Because we just put in big bags full of cryptographic equipment, weapons, things like that. They wanted the stuff that was in the car. They thought we were mercenaries and they thought it was gold because it was heavy stuff. So they thought we, were, we had gold, so that's what they wanted. Anyway, so they got him out of the car, they got the car, they jumped in the car, and they sped off in the car. Um, and so they left him alone, and he came around, he jumped into my car, but then they swarmed around my car, and they wouldn't, they wouldn't let us go. They said, you know, you're not going, and an AK pointed at me. They tried to open the doors, they wouldn't open the doors. It was kind of like a standoff. Anyway, cut a long story short, uh, we, we, we got some assistance, we sped off. They came after us, and uh, they, they, were, they were shooting at us, it was like 18 type style. AK-47s out the side of vehicles shooting at us. My vehicle got totally riddled in, uh, in, in bullets. I was driving down like this through a steering wheel going through the city of Brazzaville. It was, it was pretty intense. It was like, really like something out of like an action movie or something. And uh, there's another guy in another car behind us that came for our assistance, like a, a quick reaction team. And uh, they got rammed off the road in the process. 
and uh, we thought they were dead. We, we pulled up ahead and all we heard was gunshots go off after they got rammed off the road. So getting over the fear of death, that's a big one. Yeah. So you know, what, what's it going to do? What, to get over the fear of death, you know, we, we have to have something that we are willing to die for. That that's, that's how to get over it. And if that's what 50 Cent says is the 50th law, is getting over the, the, the fear of death. You know, once you have no fear of death, then that's it. You can do what you want and nobody can stop you. Right? So I thought about it and I thought, well, you know, not all of us are going to have these near-death experiences like 50 Cent, like, like, like I, may, I, I may have had a few, few times actually. Um, not all of us have had those. So how do we get over the fear of death without, without having a near-death experience? And it's to find in our life, what is it that we're willing to die for? You know, what are you willing to die for? Find out what that is in your life. And if you've got nothing in your life that you're willing to die for, what are you willing to live for? You know, really, what, what, why are you alive if you're not willing to die for something? So that's a, that's a crucial thing that's going to allow you to reach your full potential and not let obstacles stop you. When you have a vision for your life, when you have a very, very compelling vision that is more important than you dying, when you got that, that's unstoppable. You can't, you can't stop that. You know, the way you can stop it is to die, right? And if you die, then it was worth it. So it's a win-win. So it's a win-win. Right? Let's find out what that is. Find out what you're willing to die for. And even if you can't find anything, create it. Create something in your life that you're willing to die for. And make that part of your fuel to live. To live your life on your terms. To create financial freedom. Because the only thing stopping us from creating financial freedom is fears. Fears, limiting beliefs. And limiting beliefs are actually fears. You know, if, if we get rid of the fears and we have a big enough reason why, then the limiting beliefs start to fall away as well because we just sort of see them for the, for the BS that they are, just the belief systems, right? So find out what that is. So anyway, so this guy, so they got round off the road. We heard gunshots and well, we thought, oh yeah, they have been killed, you know? And so one of the guys jumps out, runs back, they start shooting at him, he runs back, jumps my vehicle again, we speed off again, they chase us again, and we end up losing them. So it all turned out well. One of the guys got shot. In the, in the back that was in the uh, previous car but what they were actually shooting at was to get the crowd away because all the cr a big crowd swarmed around and tried to get them and it was the actual the, the military there the police they were shooting in the air to get the crowd away so they were held captive we had to bribe them to get them out and uh, we had to you know give them money and supplies and things like that to kind of get them out but we got them out we took the bullet out of the guy in the hotel room i got some photographs of it somewhere not not here so i can't show them on the videos in a different country um, you know, got the got the piece of bits of like shrapnel out of his back, the round went through the windscreen, kind of shattered, and so it wasn't a very serious wound, but it was kind of dug right into his back. So uh, you know, it all ended well. But what I remember from that event was, I wasn't afraid. I wasn't afraid because to me, I had something that was worth dying for. If I was by myself, then it all swarmed around me. Then maybe I would have been afraid. But because there was someone else there, and the odds were seriously stacked against them, I said, no way am I driving off and leaving him to die. So I took my focus off myself, and I put it onto somebody else. I took the, the fears for myself. I wasn't fearing for myself. I was fearing for his life more than anything. I wasn't afraid. I, I was like, if they do anything to him, I'm plowing through them all in this vehicle. That's, that's what I said. Lucky enough, it didn't have to happen. I'm very glad it didn't. And then when we were driving away, I had some guys in my vehicle. So I still wasn't afraid, because I'm thinking, these guys here, i got to save these guys' lives. I'm driving. I'm driving the vehicle. You know, so who are you driving in your life? Who are you driving? Who's in your vehicle? Who are you helping? Because you know? when you put your attention, when you put your focus on helping others, the fear goes away. Because there's something more important than just our, our own inhibitions, our own self-centeredness, or whatever. You know, our, our vision expands bigger than the planet, bigger than the solar system, zooms right out to the universe, and we become the universe. 
And when you become the universe, then there's nothing to fear because you are the universe. Okay. Fifty cent gets it. Fifty cent gets it. And one last thing he said in this I really, really liked was he said, "Have no plan B." He said he didn't have a plan B. Don't have a plan B. That's what I like about Fifty Cent. He was like, Phew. "You have a plan B. It's so easy to jump off on it. It's so easy to jump off on it." A lot of people, you know, they don't really live their dreams until their back's against the wall. Until there's, there's nothing else. Until they have to. If you're comfortable, probably not going to happen for you. If you want to create financial freedom in your life, you want to create the freedom, you want to create the life of your dreams. If there's these like little comfort areas, pockets of comfort that you can go to, not likely to happen. If you cut off from all that, make a decision. No plan B, I'm just going to do this no matter what. There you go. Saved by the bell. Okay, so make sure you click on the link below if you'd like to join the team now. And uh, if you just want to watch these videos, make sure you watch all 100 videos, shift the mindset, and uh, thanks for watching.